Alright, time to talk about the Union Find, also sometimes called the Disjoint Set. This is my favorite data structure, so let's get started. So an outline of things we'll be covering about the Union Find. First I'll be going over a motivating example magnets, uh, just to illustrate how useful the Union Find can be. Then we'll go over a classic example of an algorithm which uses the Union Find specifically Kruskal's minimum spanning tree algorithm, which is very elegant, and you'll see why it needs the union find to get the complexity it has. Then we're going to go into some detail concerning the find and the union operations, the two core operations the union find uses, and finally we'll have a look at path compression. Um, what gives us the really nice amortized constant time uh, the union find provides. Okay, let's dive into uh, some discussion examples concerning the union find. So what, what is a union find? So the union find is a data structure that tracks elements which are split into one or more uh, disjoint sets. And the union find has two primary operations, uh, find and union. What find does is, given an element, the union find will tell you what group that element belongs to. And union merges two groups together. So if we have this example with magnets, suppose all these gray rectangles you see on the screen are magnets. And also suppose that the magnets have a very high attraction to each other meaning they want to merge together to form some sort of configuration. So if I label all the magnets and give them numbers, and we start merging the magnets with the highest attraction, first we're going to merge 6 and 8 together since they're the closest. So, so in our union find, we would say union 6 and 8. And when we do a lookup on to find out which groups 6 and 8 belong to, they would belong to the blue group. Uh, now perhaps 2, 3 and, f 3 and 4 are highly attracted to each other, so they would form a group. So they would form the yellow group. And perhaps 10, 13, and 14 would also form a group. And this keeps on going and we uh, unify magnets into groups. And perhaps we merge some magnets onto already existing groups, so we uh, unify um, a, a gray magnet, which is just a, a magnet in its own group, uh, to an already existing group. But also we can unify uh, groups of magnets which are different colors. And then we assign it an arbitrary color, so uh, blue, so suddenly everything in the yellow group went into... Uh, the blue group, and now when we would do a lookup in our union find to determine which group, uh, say, 2, 3, or 4 are, now we would say, ah, oh, you're in the blue group. And the union find does all this merging and finding in a very efficient manner, which is why it's so handy to have around. I'm not explaining currently how that works, we'll get into that in a later video, this is just a motivating example. So, where are other places that the union find is used? Well, we, we, well, we see the union find, again, in Kusul's minimum spanning tree algorithm, um, in another problem called grid percolation, where there's a bunch of uh, dots on a grid, and we're trying to see if there's a path from the bottom of the grid to the top of the grid, or vice versa, then the union find lets us do that efficiently by uh, merging together paths. Also, uh, si similar kind of problem in network connectivity are two vertices in a graph connected to each other through a series of edges. And also, perhaps in some more advanced examples like the least common ancestor in a tree and also in image processing. So what kind of complexity can we attribute to the union find? Uh, the complexity is excellent. So its construction is linear time, which isn't actually bad at all. Then the union 
find get component and check if connected operations all happened in what's called amortized constant time. So almost constant time, although not quite constant time. And finally, uh, count components. Well, we can determine how many components, or in our magnet examples, how many different groups of magnets we have, and we can do that in constant time, which is really, really great. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at Kruskal's minimum spanning tree algorithm and how it uses the union find. So guys, thank you for watching, and I will catch you then.